All right, this week the FDA hosted a panel talking about the safety of the most popular procedure for plastic surgery. Yeah, it raised some serious questions about breast implants. And after two days of meeting, the agency essentially concluded that more information needs to be done about the risks involved. So joining us to talk a little bit about this around the table is Dr. Sabrina Fabi, a cosmetic dermatologist, is kind of in your wheelhouse here. Um, some of the women who testified in front of Congress were talking about, listen, I wish I would have known more about this procedure instead of just Yep, I think you should do it and go ahead. Tell me a little bit about why we're seeing this now. Right. Well, presently, we've only ex we've only seen in the United States a total of about nine deaths and 500 cases reported for procedure that has been done much greater than that, mm -hmm. right? And so for the likelihood of someone to develop this type of cancer secondary to an implant or just at, you know, at all, which is it's a very rare type of immune system type of cancer. It's called anaplastic large cell lymphoma. Many people are more familiar with the term lymphoma. So it's really rare to begin with. And then the number of cases that have occurred as a result of this are even smaller. And so it's really been hard to truly tie to this since these cases are now spanning since 2011. Mm -hmm. I mean, we covered this about three or four years ago and the toll rate on deaths has only increased by three in the United States. So I think it's just because it's really hard to pinpoint, you know, if it's truly associated with the implant itself or it's if the person and has maybe certain risk factors that put them at risk if exposed to this type of implant to have the cancer. So maybe the combination of the two. So any woman who is considering this might have some concerns. What information do they need? Like what do they have to ask their doctor? What should they ask their doctor? Right. And so the form, this form of lymphoma has been most commonly associated with textured type of implants. Whether it's silicone or saline based has not been one of the reasons why it develops. There have been cases of other types of autoimmune conditions where your body fights against your own body or creates immune immune reaction to the body uh, and then that's been seen with silicone based um, type of implants so perhaps considering whether what are the benefits of getting that implant versus not getting it at all and mm -hmm. exploring a more smooth surface type of implant would be one thing that you could potentially ask your plastic surgeon and the textured ones at least in some of the research I was reading are not allowed or banned in some other countries do you feel like I mean, do you kind of wonder, like, what, well, if there is a potential for this cancer to develop, and even if it is, you know, relatively a small amount of people who are dying from it, is it even worth having it if we've got other options? If we have other options, you're right. And so I think that that's probably right now what the FDA and other regulatory agencies are exploring since what they're faced with is that a lot of these implants haven't had a lot of long-term surveillance. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's hard to follow these patients for many years after, whether for me, whether it's fillers or an injectable, or in this case, an implant to really see what transpires beyond the course of a year or two years, but five or 10 years. And mm -hmm. so without that information, it's Hard to make a decision and so I think that perhaps they're gonna start now doing they're doing a registry so anyone who reports having some type of immune reaction to their implant having some type of capsule form what they're seeing is usually it's about an eight year on average incident so eight years later people generally develop like a pocket of fluid hmm. and it's in those revision surgeries that they have typically found this interesting that was my question was the timing so so that's a, it's not an immediate thing it's not like it happens and then in a short period of time it's just developed. This right, is it's what, ranged in as early as seen. two years, okay. but average has usually been about eight years okay. after, you know, when it presents in the 600 cases that we have to evaluate, mm -hmm. right? And other symptoms uh, can include just a lot of fatigue or tiredness, uh, back aches, fevers, night sweats, in addition to a few fluid accumulation, redness, lumps and bumps around the implant. And so luckily, uh, for the most part, 80% of cases, when it happens, you remove the implant, you remove that bit of fluid accumulation uh, that's hardened around the implant, and you're fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but in other cases, it can spread. Well, certainly, uh, if you're one, someone watching and you recognize maybe some of those symptoms, especially with this FDA panel, I'm sure you're going to go uh, see your doctor. Sabrina, always great to have you. Appreciate great. it. Thank, Thank you. you, guys.